some of these days. We, we do need that chilly atmosphere to remind us that uh, we do need to go and uh, chase our dreams. Of course, when it's cold in the morning, usually uh, we do tend to sleep and lag a bit uh, in bed. But uh, who knows, the next day just might be better. My name is Carol Tumwine and I do thank you so much for keeping it select for fun where we select everything for fun. I'm here with the stories that made rounds of headlines but before I go get into that I would like to remind you that uh, whatever situation you are facing it is not the first time that situation is happening on the face of the earth and you should keep strong at it. Also it's not whether you get knocked down that matters but how you get up also says a lot about who you are as a person as well as how you're going to make it uh, when it comes to these issues of life. If you lost someone and uh, your family is going through some kind of grief, we do stand with you in prayer and we do say that uh, may that person's soul rest in peace and may the Lord uh, strengthen your family also. If you're celebrating your birthday, uh, we do say happy, happy birthday to you today as well as if you have anything good or positive going uh, we do thank God for it and uh, as the first show we do stand with you in happiness as well as if you are going through anything that is uh, difficult I would like to remind you that it's uh, that you're not the only person that is going through that and you should not be wary uh, of uh, living life of course, uh, challenges do happen every day and every time, and how you prepare to pass through them, of course, is what exactly matters. Of course, if you are working on something exciting uh, and you, that you really care about, this is in the field of work now, since it's in the morning, and I'm expecting you to be on your way to work, I'm expecting you to be, uh, of course, preparing to go to work after the first show, and uh, as you take a chilly morning, as you take your tea, as you prepare your breakfast for maybe your children or your husband, or uh, if you you are um, a single person like myself as you prepare yourself uh, a singles breakfast usually con uh, uh, consisting of a cup of uh, black tea and a little bit of uh, bread uh, I hope you are watching the first show and are going to get encouraged by these pieces now if you are working on something exciting and you really care about it you do not have to be pushed the vision will push you so what is your vision today what is your vision this year in 2021 what are some of the goals that you have set for yourself in order to achieve something uh, in your life by the end of this year. Of course, uh, some of the goals that we set last year, uh, personally, I remember setting a number of goals. There were about 20 and I uh, happened to achieve five which is not bad because uh, uh, looking at the, the statistics of uh, 20, it's just that uh, 15 goals just uh, lagged behind and failed to happen. But the five that did happen, we do thank God for that. And I would like to encourage you to always set goals for yourself. It helps you get motivated. It helps remind you to stay focused on what exactly it is that you should uh, be uh, doing uh, right about then. People who are crazy enough to think that they can change the world are actually the people that end up changing the world. For example, if you see a situation in your community or around the place you stay in and you decide and say, I can't come up with, with a solution that has not been uh, considered uh, for some time or for some years before and you say I'm going to implement it in my own way and make sure uh, that uh, of course it, it changes some of these uh, usually negative situations into positive ones. Now if you are crazy enough to think that you can cause change, trust me, you are the person we are waiting for to cause change in your community. Spread love, not hate and today I'd like to talk about a little bit about forgiveness. Uh, imagine if uh, all the wrongdoings uh, that you did, uh, if there was no of the Lord, the good Lord, uh, or whoever you believe in forgiving you, where would you be now? Okay, so uh, we need to put the forgiveness factor into our brain and uh, get used to the fact that uh, things do happen, people do hurt us sometimes, we do hurt other people, and how we forgive and move on matters a lot uh, because it does not uh, help you in any way. Uh, if you forgive a person, if you 
te ya musonyiwa you cannot uh, kusonyiwa a person and then kumwesonyiwa in the at the end of it all and so if you are planning on living life uh, smoothly you have to get used to forgiving others for whatever wrongdoings they are they they uh, commit unto you because uh, in forgiveness we get a lighter heart uh, i believe that uh, when you don't forgive easily it is uh, a burden unto you the person that is not forgiving and not the person that has not been forgiven everybody deserves a second chance everybody deserves to be forgiven and today's message is about forgiveness remember that person that hurt you so 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 much and it was unbelievable and you said okay from today onwards i have it could be a sibling, it could be an auntie, an uncle, whoever it was uh, that hurt you so deeply. I'd like you to reconsider and think about the fact that some of your blessings are being held back because you did not forgive this person. And I wonder why you would... I don't like to lose out on blessings. Anything that's going to bless me, I take that path. Anything that's going to add to my blessings, I make sure that I'm involved uh, in that kind of thing. And uh, there's no reason why you should miss out on the blessings uh, of uh, forgiveness. Because, of course, even in the holy books, it is said that if you forgive, you are forgiven more. And uh, who are you not to forgive if the good Lord can keep on forgiving you? Because sometimes, of course, we judge others. We look at the log in the other's eye before we look at the specs in our own in our own eyes so we tend to judge others more deeply than we judge ourselves and we forget that we tend to forget that everybody has their own weaknesses and we cannot do away with that one so uh, please forgive yourself first of all uh, forgive yourself uh, for treating yourself harshly sometimes and then move on to forgive others it will help in the long run it will help you uh, have a lighter heart and go about life smoothly of course today more Morning, I'd also like to remind you that if you do not have anything on your desk planned to do today, please, it's still in the morning. We are still in the hour, in the hour of six o'clock where you can get up and start to plan your day very well and come up with something that will help enable your dream to be pushed to another level. Of course, sir. Uh, uh, setting goals involve, involves writing in case you don't want to forget it because what you write you will go back later and read through and see how exactly to handle a, a uh, and see how exactly to handle what you want to do. So if you have anything like a dream, please remember to write it down so that uh, you can remember it when time comes. And what exactly you set your goals on, what exactly you set out to achieve, please do make sure you go after it, whatever it takes, however much it could be straining. Because entrepreneurs are great at dealing with uncertainty and also very good at minimizing risk. That's classic and a, that's a classic and a great entrepreneur. So never never fear to take risks, but also if there is chance to minimize those risks, please make sure that you do take the path of minimizing the risks. However, never fear to start because if you don't start, who knows? you might never realize your potential. But at least start out. And uh, usually the people that start, uh, we've all had this business saying, and uh, somebody, uh, I've, I've, I'm sure you've talked to somebody that uh, started a business once and it worked out. And uh, they all have the same, okay, not the, they differ a bit, but the, it, it's similar, where they usually tell us, okay, at the start it was a bit hard. At the start I had to struggle through rent or through the finances, through convincing people, marketing, uh, convincing, for convincing people to uh, uh, to uh, consider my product as they go about their everyday life. But these guys gain momentum after it all and you find that uh, a brand that started as, an, uh, as nothing or a brand that started from nowhere is now a very, very huge brand. You cannot limit your success as long as you start. Even the sky is not the limit. Actually, the sky might just be the start point. Even if you are an academician, for example, and uh, you're not an entrepreneur as much, and uh, for you, you decided to focus on your books. Uh, of course, uh, we do not know that knowledge is power, and uh, when you go to school, you get enlightened a lot. Uh, what you do after, the, after school, though, matters a lot. How have you planned to go out into the marketplace and uh, sell yourself, sell your product, and sell exactly your skills and talent uh, to the people out there? And make sure that you are getting paid. Uh, uh, for what exactly you do best. Of course, we may encounter many defeats, but we must not be defeated. You can encounter defeats as many as possible, but why do you allow them to defeat you? 
it is not uh, it is it should not be that way so if you encounter defeats remember not to allow them to defeat you knowing is not enough we must apply wishing is not enough we must do so if you know something but you cannot apply it if you have certain information that will help you and uh, guide you through life but you can't apply it then it's of no use because you should know and then be able to apply that uh, in your every in your day-to-day -day life to uh, in order to uh, cause positive change around your community. Of course, image, Im imagine your life is perfect in every respect. What would it look like? What would it look like to have a perfect life? A perfect life, a life that you dream of. Because like I always tell you, anything is possible in your dream, uh, in your mind, in your dreams, in your imaginations. Please use your imaginations as much as possible. Take off time to meditate and relax your mind and think and think and think. Through your thoughts, think positive thoughts because thoughts are very powerful, just like the power of the tongue. Mind what you tell yourself in the morning. And this, I, I mean literally telling yourself. When you wake up, don't be like, oh my, oh my God, just start by telling yourself positive things out loud and say, I am blessed. I am going to meet good people today. I am going to be kind. Uh, people are going to... Uh, People are going to help me out in my challenges. Every morning, just command your morning and see how it will turn out. Of course, uh, these other things, morning you positively, and then you can get to the challenges later. And don't focus on them so much. Don't give them so much power. You know, uh, we, have, we all have two sides within us, uh, the positive one and the negative one. Whichever beast you feed more, it is the one that will come out. Just like I always tell you, there are some people who feed their negative beasts more, and even when you're around them, it's just negative energy after negative energy and then there's this other person who feeds the, the positive beast more and even when you reach around them it's a whole vibe they are positive be that kind of person today and if you were negative yesterday it does not uh, change the fact that you can't change from the negative to the positive side it all takes your heart and the positioning of your attitude and remember attitude of course is everything your attitude to something matters more than you can expect it uh, to matter. Actually, today, I would like to encourage you to forgive someone. Hmm. I'm thinking of who to forgive uh, because, uh, of course, as Karat Mwini, I've been forgiven very many times. Parents, friends, lecturers, teachers throughout my school life, work. I've been forgiven many times and I can never fail to forgive. So today, my task is to forgive somebody uh, that I think hurt me so much. I'll look around and see. I don't have many of those. It probably could be one. And uh, yeah. And if I had someone, my task also today is to go there and ask for forgiveness. Task yourself to do that. Uh, it doesn't take away an arm or a leg uh, from you. Uh, just go ahead and say, you know what, look, I am sorry I did that and I will not repeat it again. Now, can we be on good terms? Because many a times we lose out on uh, friendships and connections or acquaintances that would have been of much help uh, to our, our future uh, in our life, in our everyday lives. And you find that these people, you never know what someone will be in future. You never know what someone is at that moment. You never know how much someone is connected. And I say that literally. So uh, today, make sure you go make, mend the bridges that you once burnt. Kubanga jova toyombie, jotera okuda. Whether you think you can or not, you th and if you think you can't, then you're right. So whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. You get my point? So it is about what you think. If you think you cannot, you're right. If you think you can, you are right. So if you think it's going to work out. And uh, by the way, uh, with, with, uh, the, with life, there's so many mysteries. You can look at a situation and say, ha, will it really, really work out? And then you will be surprised at how much uh, it will work out and even at the speed at which it will, uh, you know, catch up and work out. So in any situation, relate what I'm telling you to any situation you want. And uh, if you believe that it's going to work out, it will. If you believe that it's not going to work out, it won't. It's all up to you. We choose the life we want. That is why uh, some people wake up and say, I, I have to get that money. Because uh, God placed us into this world. He did not say, I've placed uh, so-and-so rich, I've placed so-and-so poor. We, we were all born in the same way, maybe from hospital, maybe from home, as little babies. We grew up and understood life from our own perspectives. And from that is where we picked up and said, okay, uh, I know I was not born from a uh, uh, well-to-do background, but if I die poor, it is my fault. 
because uh, you can't blame your parents for not thinking for you. I mean, at some point uh, when you get 18 years old, for example, in Uganda or in the European countries, when you get to 16 years old, you are considered an adult who can think on their own. So if you think, if you start thinking positively, if you start thinking in the direction uh, that you are going to be rich, I told you I love, I like, I like money so much. So if you think in that direction, then you'll find out that things will work out. And by the way, what you think, you are what you think. What you think is what you become. So here is what I'm thinking. Today, task yourself to start thinking about the amount of money you want to have. Just think about it in your cupboard and say, okay, I want to see, let's uh, give an example of 100 million shillings in my cupboard. Even if you don't have, right now, even if you don't have, 500 shillings. I'm telling you, put it in your mind. Nobody is going to come and arrest you for thinking that you're, you own 100 million shillings because it's in your, in your mind. We won't even see it. We won't even be there to tell that, hey, he's thinking he's going to get money. No, but just think it. It's a trick that works. Uh, of course, 100 million is not going to come today, but with time, as you think through it, as you think it, you'll see how, which ways to take. And with time, it will conform. The mind will conform with the physical and you'll find yourself with the money, what more uh, way to start our morning than uh, that beautiful, beautiful uh, uh, inspiration. So today I do have a number of stories and I would like to begin uh, with the upcoming story, the hot story. May 12th is the day that everybody is anticipating for uh, the president, Yoweri Kagutam Seven, uh, to, to stand up and swear in as, as uh, uh, the president of Uganda, the president of the Republic of Uganda. This is his sixth term in office. He beat 11, he beat 10 other candidates uh, in the last concluded general elections, January 14th. We were here discussing a number of issues, how the elections would turn out, what to expect, and we were on pressure. We remember him saying he's worried that they are going to steal his votes. And we were like, ah, who can steal Museveni's votes? But well, in the end, uh, he won and uh, he was uh, declared president of Uganda. And the newly elected MPs that uh, you, you chose, I hope that uh, Balidas be maronda mube siga ntibagenda kola. Ejo nabade ku prime minister's office. We expect a Rwandan president. We expect a Kenyan president. We expect very many African presidents. I don't know if uh, the president of uh, South Africa. So Cyril Ramaphosa will make it because the uh, news coming in right now is that he has been suspended. We shall take a look at that. But yes, Museveni is set to swear in uh, tomorrow. Later on, I will, uh, sorry, he's set to swear in May 12th. Uh, later on, I will be getting a topic of discussion. And today's topic of discussion is about our rich guy, uh, one of the tycoons we have in Uganda, Hamis Chigundu. He has been uh, having a case with the Diamond Trust Bank, where he claims they stole, they, they uh, forcefully got 120 million shillings out of his account. Now, he's, he went to court and beat DTB uh, uh, on ground, where, he, where they uh, requested, uh, where DTB was requested by court, uh, by court commercial court uh, to to refund this money on his account with an 8% interest. However, uh, DTB went to the to another court and uh, reported and they, there was a rehearing. There is a rehearing of this uh, case expected uh, to happen. Uh, that will be our topic of discussion that I'll get into uh, later. Of course, uh, this happened months earlier where we saw we saw very, very many challenges with the Hamis Chigundu case. Uh, first of all, we didn't, I, I had never known uh, uh, Hamis Chigundu's banking details until the, the breakout of this story. That is when I got to understand that, oh, Diamond Trust Bank is involved in uh, this guy's wealth. And it is not only the Diamond Trust Bank in Uganda, but also in Kenya. Now, uh, Hamis Chigundu came out and said, uh, how is the Diamond Trust Bank in Kenya allowed to enter or take uh, the issues of uh, Uganda's Diamond Trust Bank? But I believe it's one company. For example, uh, uh, we have STV Uganda. I'm imagining uh, in the near future, if we have STV Kenya, uh, we shall be sharing staff members, ideas, and stuff like that. Because it's one umbrella company headed by uh, the same top management team, 
and different stuff in the different countries. We'll get into that, but uh, I would like to take a look at this story where government is finalizing plans to harmonize uh, salaries. Of course, uh, government yesterday issued detailed guidelines on implement implementation of a planned merger up to uh, 97 agencies, uh, government agencies, and it, it, it is expected to result into massive uh, job losses. Of course, uh, this is not the first uh, group of people that is going to experience massive job loss uh, as compared to what COVID-19 uh, brought to our table. It's been a very, very hectic time because uh, some of our friends and colleagues, I'm sure you know somebody who lost their job uh, because of the COVID-19 effect. Of course, if we do remember, there are some uh, uh, restaurants that closed. There are some hotels that cut people. There are some media houses that sent people home because of lack, first of all, of funding and also uh, the uh, companies are required to uh, follow the SOPs and you find that uh, if uh, there's a very big crowd, then they are violating their SOPs which might bring them into problems. So in a statement to Parliament, the State Minister for Public Service, Mr. David Karugaba, said arrangements are in offing to harmonize job grades, job pays across ministries and departments and agencies. So what uh, is going to happen is that much as some people are being laid off, some other people's salaries are going to increase. Uh, now this depends on your luck. If you're lucky, you're on the side of the ones whose salaries are going to increase. If you're not lucky, you're on the side of uh, the salaries uh, of the jobs that are going to be lost. Civil societies and scholars, among others, have unsuccessfully pressed the government to establish a salary review commission envisaged under the, construct, the, under the constitution uh, to regularize pay for public servants. I don't think it should be only for public servants. The private sector, for example, I, I, I know that... Uh, Private-owned companies usually tend to decide exactly what to pay their workers and how uh, to pay them, depending on the work that they contribute to that particular company. Now, uh, we should remember, of course, uh, that we don't have a minimum wage bill yet, and that is uh, kind of stressing us out. But uh, we will be, uh, we will try to be strong and uh, wait on uh, maybe good to uh, solve that. However, President, we, should, uh, we shouldn't also forget that President Museveni in his July 17th letter raised the red flag on uh, mushrooming these agencies and demanded clear practical recommendations to rationalize the public uh, institutions to ensure efficiency of the government. However, I don't know why we, we saw recently uh, uh, Rebecca Kadaga, uh, the Honorable Speaker of Parliament, as well as uh, our President Museveni, disagreeing on some of these matters. And uh, we saw uh, President Museveni is advised uh, not to advise not to add 20 billion shillings to, to the 400 billion shillings already existing uh, for the public for the uh, parliamentarians uh, to be going uh, to, uh, their their allowance to be travelling out of the country. The, the president was against it, while the Honorable Rebecca Kadaga uh, decided to ignore him and go ahead and add this money. Now I don't know why uh, these people ignore the president's uh, the president's initiative. If the president says something, it means that he has been advised by all his advisors, and we do know uh, President Museveni has a number of uh, advisors. So why is it again uh, that we do not listen to him that much? Of course, you will be uh, telling me on, my, on our social media platforms, that's at STV Uganda, YouTube, our YouTube channel, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, where we are live. Please do tell me why, why you think uh, they do not uh, connect. Also, comment on any other story that I'm talking about. Let's have a chit-chat about it. Right about now, I would love uh, to uh, go into the COVID-19 updates. Of course, we should uh, remember that right now, uh, it's vaccination period, and uh, we are trying to vaccinate as many as millions of people just before the lockdown is uh, done away with, just like uh, President Museveni said on the Labor Day Day of this year. Of course, the Ministry of Health is investigating circumstances under which uh, some designated health facilities, it is said, for COVID-19 vaccination are stopping exercising at 2 p.m. instead of the official time of 5 p.m. Now, I don't know exactly who is uh, overseeing this. Is, is it uh, the minister, the Honorable Minister Jen Rutha Cheng that is overseeing this exercise? Because you cannot tell. So, you can't no, 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 no,
And then uh, this, the, the, the hour of 2 p.m. to 5 p.m., we shall not work. There are some health facilities. Zigalao sawa munana. Ngazina kugalao sawa kuminemu. Nene zisalao nezigamba. Sawa munana fetufu demu office. Abala abantu tetugenda ba vaccinating. So chatu se mu um, Ministry of Health's office. Kati ate bali, bali mkui investigating. Chaja shitia ate ani achidi e mavega. The this follows complaints from people who say they missed vaccinations because uh, hospitals preferred to stop the exercise before the official time. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm amazed that uh, Ugandans, uh, but they, they are running a better need a vaccination, you know, because uh, Jetulaga, it is said uh, that uh, you will need a, vaccin a vaccination card or whatever they give you when you get vaccinated to make sure that you go through life anyhow. If you want to travel, you need that document. It's going to become like uh, the national ID or the yellow fever vaccine. If you want to get a job somewhere, they'll first find out did you test for COVID-19, where are your results. If you want to carry out any sort of business uh, that requires you maybe getting out of town or interacting with other people, it's going to be very important if you get vaccinated. Now, it's worrying that uh, we have uh, thousands and thousands of people that want to be vaccinated, but are still lagging behind simply because uh, some of these uh, health facilities close at 2 p.m. instead of the official 5 p.m. Do they have reasons? Let's find out. So this follows, uh, so for private health facilities, they can determine the time that they will be vaccinating people. Uh, and uh, the Ministry of Health, Health, of course, does not pay health workers to do the vaccination in these private organizations. That is what I was telling you, that for private sector, they can decide exactly what they want. But for, for example, in the uh, private sector of health, this is a fact, even if you, it's a private sector, of course, you, you should think about people's lives. How are they going to react uh, to the fact that you close at 2 p.m. even even if you're private uh, you are private organization however this is about government organizations what the Ministry of Health is worried about is that some government organizations decide to close much earlier than they should of course dr. Charles Olaro the director of clinical uh, services uh, at Ministry of Health said in an interview yesterday that since they do not pay these people of the private sector then they are going to focus on the the, the public and uh, the government sectors. Uh, Naguru Hospital, a health worker who preferred to call himself Brian, also said a few people come in the afternoon. So uh, I am imagining if a few people come in the afternoon to get uh, vaccinated. Yeah. And uh, as you can see on our screen, jobs are already in the country. Uh, we, we are already prepared to get to vaccinate people. And then there is a doctor out there who is saying, How sure are you that as, what if I was coming at 3 p.m.? after doing my work and then you leave at two. Will I find you there? No. Uh, so uh, is it uh, because we still have, of course, as a health sector in Uganda, we still have a problem of the, of, uh, uh, and uh, we don't have enough uh, health workers, yeah? So I'm imagining uh, maybe we should increase on the people that we employ in that sector so that uh, we are able to uh, match it out with the schedules that we have. For example, uh, for example, if we have, uh, if you have six medical workers, how about three work in the morning and then three work in the afternoon so that we don't have a lag of finding the hospital closed? That is very, very terrible because imagine I use my transport, for example, I'm from, uh, from the market selling my goods. I used my transport, came to the hospital to get vaccinated and... Lo and behold, there is nobody to do the vaccination work. A total of 34,000, people have so far been, let me read that number again. A total of 34,108,000 people people. Have, be, have so far been vaccinated across the country. Of course, we still have a very long way to go. If we want the lockdown uh, to open up, we still have a very, very, very long way to go. Because think about this. Uh, if, you, uh, if we are to get all these sectors up and running, for example, the performing arts sector that has never been opened till date, if we need to really, really get it, get it going, then we should follow what the president is, is telling us. Uh, the fact that he's saying, 
we, should, we need as many as millions of people, around 7 million people vaccinated, and then we can uh, open up the country and start business as usual. And so if you are out there and uh, you've, uh, you fear the COVID-19 vaccine like myself, uh, please uh, think about ways of combating the fear that you have so that we get our uh, uh, country going. As you can see, that was uh, Dr. Jen Ruth Acheng, the Honorable Minister for uh, Health, uh, getting vaccinated. Doctor uh, decided, of course, to go for politics earlier this, uh, when, when the political season started, and we didn't uh, see much of her presence around that time when the elections were hot. But she got vaccinated, and I think this is what prompted the first family as well to get vaccinated. We saw uh, the, the, the first lady, Janet Kataham Seveni, uh, get vaccinated. We saw her husband, Museveni uh, Yori um, Kaguta, getting vaccinated. And that is when uh, some other political figures started to get vaccinated. However, have you seen any of these NUP, uh, JEMA, UPC, uh, uh, FTC guys get vaccinated let us know in our comments below uh, personally I do think that uh, if it's if it is the rule uh, then the only thing that we can do if we can if we have to stop it uh, then it is praying to God because if they say that you must get vaccinated then there, there there's not two ways about it there's not two ways about it either you get vaccinated or you get vaccinated. Please prepare yourself uh, to uh, be on that part. COVID-19 updates will be coming back as we go along the week and the month and we see how the vaccination process is going up ahead. Of course, don't forget that uh, STV Uganda will be bringing you live updates from the May 12th event, which will be the swearing-in of our president, Yori Kaguta Museveni. Well, we should also forget. We should also not forget that the anti-human sacrifice bill 2020 has been passed by Parliament, where Parliament has passed the long-awaited uh, protection and prohibition of human rights sacrifice bill 2020. This bill should have pa been passed a very long time ago because it is very, very, very absurd that we are even thinking about talking about a bill passing a, passing a bill. It should be obvious uh, because human life is just is not a cat's life where. You can just go and shoot it dead and then just move on with life. A human being is a very important uh, person and so they sh their lives shouldn't be played about, around with just like that. The bill, once assented to by the president, will see anyone who exercises or finances the act of human rights liable to a death penalty. Now I like this. I hope that it is put into place that when you come out and say you are caught in the child sacrificing uh, processes, in child killing, in human killings. You are also penalted and uh, killed so that you see how it feels to kill other people. It, it, it's even not, I, I can't believe that we had, the parliament had to sit down and debate, should we pass the bill or not? Should the bill, you know, to, 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 is that debatable? I don't think so. I think it should have been passed from the word go uh, because we, sh we I, I started personally when I was still doing divinity, was it in senior five and six? We studied about these things and we, we used to give examples of Ugandans who killed other people so that over they get money. Then Ugandans who killed her because they were so angry. And it has been, I went to uh, senior five a long time ago. And so it ha from then, uh, around very many years ago, up to now, we have been discussing whether to pass this bill or not. I think it's uh, very unfair. Well, to the legislators, to the legislators, ah, Oluzungu, to the legislators, the use of human sacrifice is a primitive culture, and proprietors should be tried before court martial. Of course, being primitive means that uh, it happened in uh, the early years of may maybe Aliman and uh, ATS, African Traditional Society, where I. Uh, you sleep with someone's husband, they take you to a, to a river and throw you there and you die. Eh, man, you guys, people were tough those days. And uh, I, think, <laughs> I think that's where discipline uh, came from. Actually, I used to hear that uh, women who ate a lot of meat or a lot of chicken were also killed by their husbands because they're like, ah, uh -uh, did I marry a glutton or something? But these days, we eat like we want, and uh, who knows the, what the future holds. Like they've passed this bill, uh, we are excited, we are happy that uh, finally the the once anticipated bill is on now. You kill someone, you're also killed, so that you see how it 
feels. My name is Carol Tumwini. I'm going to take a very short break and return with more stories. However, don't go anywhere because we still have a lot in store for you as the first show STV Uganda will be back. <laughs> 